Welcome to this YouTube channel. We are Bibleway Temple International, an apostolic church situated in the Mova Lavantil community, located in the beautiful Twin Island Republic state of Trinidad and Tobago. Our mandate is to touch and transform lives by being good stewards, sharing the message of Jesus Christ. And today, it is a pleasure to share this message with you. We invite you to praise and worship with us as we proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord over our lives. Hallelujah. Let's give God a high note of praise. For he is worthy this morning. He is worthy to be praised. He is worthy to be honored. He alone is worthy to be glorified, O oh God. We thank Him this morning for life, O oh God. Because of Him, we are here today just to give praise and honor. You want His matchless name. Hallelujah. For He is a faithful God. He is the keeper of our soul. Hallelujah. We bless Him this morning. We bless Him. Giving respect to the Holy Spirit, our bishop, our elders, Mommy Paul, all the ministers, all the deacons, all the saints and visiting friends, I greet you all in the wonderful and most precious name of our Lord and Savior, and not forgetting soon coming King. Amen. You can have your seats. This morning I will be sharing from a familiar passage. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to the book of Matthew, chapter 13. When all found, just say amen. As you look for it, I will just open in a word of prayer. Father and God, we give you praise, honor and glory. We thank you, O oh God, for this time, just to be in your presence, O oh God. Going in the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. And at your right hand, there is pleasures forevermore. Father, in the name of Jesus, even as I share your word this morning, O oh God, Father, I stand and avail myself to be used by you, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. It's not about me, it's all about you, O oh God. And Father, O oh God, our prayer this morning is let thy will be done. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. All from? And it said in Matthew chapter 13, reading from verse 4. And when he sowed, some seed fell by the wayside. And the fowls came and devoured them up. Some fell upon stony places where they had, no, where they had not much earth. And forthwith they sprung up because they had no deepness of earth. And when the sun was up, they were squashed. And because they had no root, they withered away. Verse 7. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them. But others fell into good ground and brought forth some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold. Who are heirs to hear? Let them hear. And we'll go down to verse 18, which explains. Hear ye, therefore, the parable of the sower. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one and catcheth away that which was sown in the heart, this is he which receives seed by the wayside. But he that received the seed into stony place, the same is he that heareth the word, and on, on with joy receiveth it. Yet had he not root in himself, but dureth for a while. For when tribulation or persecution arise, because of the word, by and by, he is offended. He also that receiveth seed among the thorns, is he that heareth the word, 
and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he becometh unfruitful. But he that receiveth seed into the ground is he that heareth the word and understandeth it, which also beareth fruit and bring forth some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Amen? This morning, my theme is, what are you sowing? The Bible mentioned, seeds is mentioned in the Bible. One as offspring. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to Isaiah 1, verse 4. Seed is mentioned as offspring. And a sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, a seed of evildoers, children that are corruptors, they have forsaken the Lord, they have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger. They have gone away backward. The Bible is speaking about here is at a certain time, the children of Israel has turned their back against God. In other words, they was doing as they pleased. They moved away from the relationship their forefathers have taught, have taught them about God. Sometimes we bring up our children in a, in a God-fearing way. And when they reach a certain age, they decide to go on their own course. They believe that they know right and they know wrong. But we know that is not taking place in this house, but we know these are the things that are be taken here presently. And that is the seed. It speaks about seed. Yeah. We're talking about the seed of offspring. Another seed we're speaking about plant. We know plant in Genesis 1:11 when God created. And he created plant and he said, let everything bring forth its seeds of its own kind. So we understand to plant, bring forth seed. We speak about offspring. Another one in offspring. The seed which lies in the loins of a man. That when he come and he have his wife, that they bring forth child. That is the seed of his offspring, which is in his loins. And in the third one, we have the seed of faith. We understand that faith is a seed. Because God says, if you have faith as a mustard seed, and we understand that the mustard seed is the smallest seed that we could find. And if your faith is measured with that seed, it brings forth big faith. It starts small and it brings forth big faith. But what I want to talk to you this morning, really, is coming from the book of James. James chapter 3, reading from verse 6. We are still talking about seed. Eh? James 3, 6, eh? and the tongue is a fire, a word of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members that a defileth the whole body, and set it on fire, the course of nature, and it is set on fire of hell. Little do we know that our tongue is a seed. The Bible says life and death lies in the power of the tongue. The Bible says not what goes in a man defiles a man, but what comes out. 
And we allow this little member to defile our whole body. At times, we allow this member, this tongue, we give this tongue so much a slack, so much a rope that it run away with us. And we are not conscious minded that the things that we are saying. When we speak ill about someone, it's a seed that we are planting in their lives. That every time we see them, just as we say, is that we see in. So if someone is evil, and every time we, 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 we see that individual, we don't mark him as that is an evil person. We're not seeing what God can do, but we label this individual as an evil person. So no matter what, at any time we see this person, we pass him straight, that person evil. We ain't looking for nothing good coming out of this individual. But at one time we all was evil. And because somebody saw good in us. But we now believe that we have reached. So we are not willing to give somebody else a chance. It's only God can make a difference in our lives. A man is a regenerated man when he comes to Christ. He cannot wake up a morning and just say, here we're going and I change in my life. It may be for a day or two to fool the people that is around him. But he cannot do it. It will not last for long. And this little member that we have ruling us and have it so disobedient that we serve this little member instead of we allowing this little member to utter good words we forbid and we see in Psalm 34 verse 13 he said keep thy tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking guile and you know what leads us to this at times sometimes we hear someone say something about us and they're talking behind your back. And when you do hear it now, you put up a wall between you and that person because you hear they talk something or they say something. You never hear them personally. They never talk it in front of you. But they talk it behind your back. And because of what you hear, you build now have enmity with that individual. But let me tell you something. Is a reason that person is talking behind your back. And sometimes we only study in what they say because they are not at your level to talk in your face and to tell you exactly what they want to tell you. That is why they have to talk behind you. So where they are speaking is where they are saying because God has transitioned you from there to there. And they will always continue to talk about you because of your light and who you are serving and who you are representing. So when you do not understand, you criticize. What people talk and say behind your back is no business of yours. It is no business of yours. And because we so attached defending ourselves that when we hear something we believe that we have to give that person a piece of our mind a piece of our heart and as the Bible say it's not what goes in but it's what comes out so you forget your stand with God now and you tell yourself this person deserves I need to explain, I need to go I need to bash this person and the enemy now controlling your tongue now and you blow it out of proportion and from day one and from beginning it was none of your business because if they had something to tell you they would have tell you and this tongue as it said in 13 keep thy tongue from evil 
where the evil starts from within your mind. And then it goes to your heart. And then now your tongue release. But he said, keep thy tongue from evil. Every time you are speaking or you are going to speak, ask yourself, what is the end result? What are you looking for? What are you trying to achieve? So by doing this, you're guarding your tongue. Remembering that life and death lies in the tongue. And I'm not sowing seed of destruction, but I'm sowing seed of blessing. God says, speak all man good. Sometimes it's difficult. Sometimes we know certain things and it's hard. We have to let our friends, our neighbor know what we know. And we find ourselves in a good gossip. And the gossip is not profitable to us. Because if we had a relationship, or we have in a relationship with God, and we try and we today we here and tomorrow we outside. And the works and the lives of God, we ain't going nowhere. Psalm 39 one said, I said, I will take heed to my ways that I sin not. With my tongue, I will keep my mouth. With a bridle, whilst the wicked is before me. It's not easy when the wicked come up before you and have all kind of things to say and actually trying to push that button, you know, to get an outburst from you, you know. It is very difficult. But God has brought us too far. And the same thing the enemy are bringing before us over and over again. Today it might be you, tomorrow it will be somebody else, and somebody else, and somebody else. And we are rolling with this year in, year out, year in, year out. And when we take ourselves and say, but it's more than five years, this person do me this, and more than six years, and you're still holding it. We're still holding it. We are being disobedient, first to begin, with the word of God. And the amount of damages that we are doing to ourselves. Because one, we can pray. He said if iniquity is found in us, I will not hear us. The shop you're praying, waste our time. He said if your brother out against you, go and make it right. And leave your gift now because you're so concerned about the gift. Because all, all blessings come from above. So you're not interested in that gift, you know, if you feel I go for a big um, offering and offering go cover my sin, but yet I'm passing that individual straight and I'm dealing with that individual. God don't need that, that offering. God don't need that. A thousand cattle on the hill belongs to him. We need God. Because of the love of God, we are here, and the mercies of God. God desired that we control and we walk in the likeness of Him. So He said, Keep my mouth with a Bible when the wicked is before me. In spite of people naturally provoking you, throwing the pampas over, by, over your fence. And you know you are no children, so you don't know where the pampas is coming from. So provoke you because they want to hear constantly. They want to disrupt you. They want you to be like them. God is saying, keep your tongue. It's not easy, but keep your tongue. Don't allow your tongue to have the best of you. Keep it. When you are speaking, speak good. When they throw the bless, pampas and the noise them, say, morning, God bless you. God bless you. Keep your tongue. Speak good. Out of the abundance of the heart. You have a good heart. Speak good. Proverbs 21, verse 23 say, 
whoso keepeth his mouth and his tongue keepeth his soul from trouble. How much of us our, our, our mouth put us in trouble? We talking things we ain't supposed to talk. We saying things that we ain't supposed to say. Because we hear it, we want to be friends, we want we co workers, no, but I know, you ain't know. I get it straight. Right? And when the trouble arises now, and the friend knows, and they ask, Who tell you? Sandra tell me. And now Sandra had to defend herself because she had no evidence, no proof what she's saying is true. So now, because of Sandra mouth, Sandra ended up in trouble. She said, Keep it thy soul from trouble. Guard your tongue. What seed are you sowing? Solomon says, Suffer not thy mouth to cause thy flesh to sin. Imagine your mouth could have you sinning on a daily basis. That mouth, that way we like to talk, we like to talk, we like to talk. You know, sometimes I'm trying to say you're out of timing because you're talking too much, you're talking where you ain't even know. To guard our tongue. We have a saying that the devil finds works for evil hands. And long as our mind is stayed on God, it's not easy to talk out of time and talk. Sometimes you just feel your whole in a part start to stir up that you have to dismiss that conversation and walk away because this is not none of your business you don't want to hear that and it's not profitable because your eyes is stayed on Christ sometimes they just want to call you Jesus only and everything you're talking is God, God, God right? But this is what we had to talk because you have given us the great commission. So everybody I have come in contact with, whether Mommy Paul or not, Mommy Paul is safe, God bless you. El Larry ain't safe, but you know Jesus is safe. This is what God wants us to use our tongue for. To share his word because he desires that none shall perish. But we share in our using our tongue to have a good time and have a good laugh. And it profit us nothing. It can only bring death onto us. Imagine dead by talking too much. That is what they're putting on your death certificate. Dead because you're out of time in your mouth. That is not a nice thing. That is not a nice thing. And you know it might sound like a joke, but your mouth will send you to hell. No, it might sound like a joke, but your mouth will send you to hell. Because you're talking the wrong thing. He says salt water and, and fresh water cannot flow from the same fountain. And this is your mouth you are speaking about. How could we come and praise God and then want to go and talk out of time and talk with the same mouth? God is a holy God. Everything that we do unto God ought to be holy. If we are struggling with an issue, God is there waiting for you to bring it that he will deliver you. Titus 3, 2 say, To speak evil of no man, to be no brawler, but gentle, showing all meekness unto all men. It's not easy to deal with human beings. A time my wife telling me, she say, a red bean, black bean. But human being is the most difficult 
As believers, we always have to give, our right, give up our rights for peace sake when dealing with unbelievers. Because the self-conscious, they always believe that their way is the right way. And they are dealing with so much as spirit from generation curse and then now all of that bounce up on your lap. You have to deal with that. You have to work with that. As working people, we all encounter situations like this. And it's not easy. Because why? They are seeing a difference in us. They envy what they are seeing in you. They want what they are seeing in you, but they don't know how to come. And it's not you, you know, it's Christ in you. It's Christ in you that they are seeing. You are allowing Christ's light to shine before men they, that, that they may see their good works. And at the end of the day, we glorify in our Father which art in heaven. Brethren, guard our tongue. And some said, and my tongue shall speak of thy righteousness and of thy praise all the day long. This is the purpose of our tongue. To speak about God's righteousness and to give him praise. We see Sister Nika. We see Denisia. We see Minister Cynthia talking this morning as the Spirit allowed them to speak. And this is a message for the church. This is a message for the church that we need to align ourselves with God. He said, greater works we shall do in these last days. And without a shadow of a doubt, we are seeing the last days. We are seeing Matthew 24 being revealed. It's no time to wonder again or question yourself as a Bible reading people. These are the last days. It's not business as normal, but it's an opportunity to align yourself with God. If God catches us in a state, in our state, we're hearing about the rapture. We're hearing all these things about to take place. And where we are, are we ready to go with Christ? We might say yes because the majority is saying yes. We may say yes because this is our desire to, to go with Christ. But examine ourselves. Are we really? Are we really ready? This book, This book, our Bible, our devices, wherever we have the Bible, this is what we have to examine our lives with. This is what we're supposed to be walking. This is what we're supposed to be talking. Forget the rest. Forget the rest. He said, and my tongue shall speak of thy righteousness. And of thy praise all the day long. All are absolute word. We can't add or take away. All the day long. So if God grant us three scores and ten, I get saved at 20, at 20, at 50 years to speak about his righteousness. If I get saved at 50, at 20 years to speak about his righteousness and to give him praise. This is our desire. Let us understand and ask ourselves, what seed are we sowing? Are we sowing seed of damnation, corruption? Are we making hell our eternal home? Or are we going to speak righteousness of Jesus Christ to give him praise all our days long. God bless you in Jesus' name. Thank you for joining us today. Please like and share this video. If you need prayer or counseling, 
feel free to call us at 680-7111 or WhatsApp us at 754-4270. Someone is ready and waiting to pray and speak with you. If you desire to make a financial contribution, you can make a direct deposit to our Scotiabank checking account, Bibleway Temple, account number 1200176, transit number 90035. On behalf of the leadership of this ministry, Apostle Celestin and Mother Europol, we say thank you. And we look forward to having you fellowship with us another Sunday.